Now, I got a pretty interesting pattern for you today, and I know I say that all the time, but this one really is pretty unique. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, and as always, thank you for stopping by. So today's pattern, I did not get this from any book. I just got some new crystal chenille, uh, some estaz, I guess you might call it. So I went online looking for some patterns that use this, and I found one called the Tequili. Now it's really a unique pattern. There's nothing else out there like it. It's a streamer, pretty much just an attractor, because it doesn't look like anything. And some of the unique traits for it, it has three tufts of marabou in the back. The original was a yellow, black, and yellow. I'm tying it as a variant. I didn't have any yellow marabou, and I think that was just a little bit flashy for you know what I would be using it for. And it's got three pairs of legs, and then of course the crystal chenille wrap for the body. And another way I'm varying how I'm doing this one, I'm putting it on a curve shank hook, and instead of just a, a round bead, I'm putting a bullet head bead on it. So the cool thing about a pattern like this is, feel free to mix it up. It's still gonna be a tequila, whether it's on a straight shank hook, or a curve shank hook, or a round bead, or a bullet bead. And another cool thing about this fly, you really can't mess it up. If you tie it poorly and it's a big buggy mess, it's still going to be a nice fish catcher for you. Now, I would say the species this fly would work well for, smallmouth bass, tie it in bigger sizes for some big mouth bass. And I'm sure some of the big territorial browns out there will just attack a pattern like this to get it the heck out of their water. But it's a pretty fun one. Not at all hard to tie. I think you're going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there you go, in the vise, a tequila. Pretty nifty looking pattern. Certainly a, a strange and unique one. Now you can go big with this guy. Most of them I've seen are fours and, and twos, and probably as small as an eight, but I just couldn't bring myself to tie this on anything bigger than a six. And again, I'm varying it a little bit with a curve shank hook and the bullet cone. And I am putting some thick weight on here because this, this is not a tungsten bead. So I'm going with some 030. Pretty heavy stuff. And actually, this is so heavy, I gotta take my old scissors to trim it right here. That's something I haven't mentioned. When I have a pair of scissors I retire, I just mark them with a piece of tape or something so that I know they're not my good scissors and I use them for things like snipping wire and wraps like this. So these scissors are already quite dull, but they'll cut weight and wire just fine. Now what thread am I gonna use on this? That's right, I'm stepping it up. I've got a black and this is a 140 denier. So I'll put a little dam behind it, take a few wraps up over it and take it back to the bend of the hook. Now for the tail, marabou. Just three tufts of marabou. Now I said I will uh, tell you when I'm straying from the original. The original was yellow, black, yellow. And I thought that's a little bit bright for what I want to do. So I'm going to do a gray, black, gray. So still three tufts and not, you know, a significant tail. And this to me is probably the hardest part of the fly is getting three tufts of marabou caught in without them going all over the place on you. So there's the first tuft, and I've got it caught in with two wraps. And if you cheat at all, I would make the middle black one just a little bit thinner, a little bit less material than the, the grays, because the black will overpower it if you let it. So let's just catch this tuft right on top here. Another two wraps. Okay, now we've got our gray and black, and if we're lucky, the last gray one right on top, we'll still be able to see that black one in between them. So I'm gonna try and catch this in about the same spot, same length. So let's do two wraps here and see what this gives us. Okay, so we've got some gray, black, gray, and I think we're gonna be fine. I'm gonna do a couple wraps going forward to really lock it in. Now again, this I think is the hardest part. Just pulling these up right here, kind of twisting them together. Maybe lick your fingers if you think it will help. 
We're gonna use this to thicken up our underbody just a little bit. So go ahead and take your thread back up to right behind the weight. Here we go. And then we're just gonna catch this in right behind the weight. Okay, there's a couple wraps right there. I don't really want it to spin around on me too much, but if it does, I'm fine with it. So now I'm gonna take these old scissors again and snip this thick piece right here. And let's try to just bury this in. And I'm using that thick marabou to try to smooth out the body between my weight and then the tail. Got a little stray right there. Okay, I think we're gonna be fine with that. Now the next thing I'm gonna catch in, it's our cactus chenille. And you have some options here. You probably want three strands if you're using a, a standard size here. So I, I'm gonna use two strands of this goldish kind of light brown and then one strand of black. So the, the one that you use two strands of is going to be a little bit, you know, it, I won't say overpowering, but it'll be a little bit dominant. So I've got, you know, two strands of this brownish gold and one strand of black. And let's just catch this into the back right here where we're going to start wrapping them. And then take our thread up about a third of the way up, maybe just a little forward of the, the hook point. That might be too far, let's back it up. Okay, that looks fine. Now, rubber legs. And these are a, a small rubber leg, and they come in little slips like this. And what I'll do, I will just, you know, take two of them, strip two of them off, so this is too thick right here, and then I'll cut three pieces. We're gonna have three pairs of legs. So I'll cut three pieces. On this size fly, maybe an inch and a half. And I'm just gonna catch these on with X wraps. Kind of right on top, not real tight wraps at first. Let's do two right there and then go under it and do two right there. So that's my goal to just kind of keep them on top with as many wraps as you need. Then take your thread up about another third and then do another pair. And then the last pair, a third in front of that. Okay, after you've got your legs to your liking, um, then we can use this cactus chenille to help position them as we wrap it up. So pull your three strands up right here and twist them together if you want. I don't, I don't think it's that big a deal here, but just wrap it on up in between these legs um, and get as thick a body as you think looks good. Okay, I started running out of material there, but we got enough to get to the to the front. So just a couple wraps to catch that off. Now let's trim the excess right here. And one more step after we do a whip finish. I haven't been putting any head cement on it. I'll just do a, a big whip finish here, maybe two, three turns or one, five turn should work. And what we'll want to do now, I'm going to take my bodkin and split up these legs. And take a look at what you got. These aren't that even and they need to be just a little bit shorter. So go ahead and trim them. and do any adjusting or cleanup as needed. So there you go. Pretty simple fly called the Tequili. So that's all everybody. Pretty fun pattern. I appreciate you watching. 
Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.